Hey guys, it's Chloe, and I'm going to lead you guys through the second part of the housing application tutorial. So right now we're on the room selection part of the um, application. So what you're going to do is that you're going to go and click on residence hall room selection. Now we're going to go through all of the selections, but if you're doing just a residence hall, you know, just follow along. So we're going to... Um, choose which hall we're going to live in or where we would like to live in. All right, I don't know about you guys, but Joiner looks like a pretty good spot. So, as you can see, there's amount of double occupancy spaces, single occupancy spaces, and triple occupancy spaces. So basically, to look at the number of rooms available. So if you're like double occupancy spaces and you see that there are 12 double occupancy spaces available that means there are 12 beds available on the floor so to know how many rooms you would divide that by two so there's six on the second floor um, and for the fourth floor for example if you were looking at triple occupancy spaces you would notice that there are 12 beds available so you would just divide that by three so there are four rooms available for triple occupancy spaces so I'm going to choose the second floor because that's where I'd like to live with my roommate group. Um, and now, as you s can see, we have the second floor floor plan. So you can look at like what rooms you would like to where you would like to live in relation to the rest of the hall. So, you know, you can like look and see where the stairs are and where the kitchen is and whatnot. And like if you can notice on the available rooms, if it has F on it, it means females are supposed to be living there. If it has M's on it, it means that males should be living there. And if it says D, that means it's like a dynamic gender. So if you're you can be a male or a female and like enter that room. But once you click it, it assigns the room gender to your gender. Now that we see the floor plans, we're gonna go ahead and choose rooms 209 and 210 because there are four people in my roommate group. So I'm gonna make sure everybody has a room. Quick note, if you're doing a hall style and you have a roommate group, you don't have to choose rooms that are right beside each other. You can choose rooms as long as like they're on the same floor, everything is good. So you can choose rooms 209 and 226 if you wanted to, but make sure they're all on the second floor. So if you're the person in charge or whoever has access to the roommate group information, you choose which room you're going to be in. So I want to be in joiner 209A, and once you selected that, you're pretty much finished. So this is basically the end selection page once you're done with all of like the room selection items. So, as you can see, you get occupancy information, who's going to be in your room, as well as the floor plan, and until room swap period opens, you can't really change it. Um, they just do it to make sure that like everything flows quickly and that everybody has a chance to get a room. Um, so, that's basically it for hall style. And so, now we're going to move on. Okay guys, so right now we're going to go through the same room selection, but this time if we wanted to live in a suite. So right now I'm looking through all of the Morrison rooms. Um, basically the same thing applies as the hall style. Um, the number of double occupancy, single occupancy, or triple occupancy spaces means that depending on how many beds are available. So if it's double occupancy divided by two, that's how many rooms are available in the suite. Um, single occupancy divided by one, uh, triple occupancy divided by three, and that's how many rooms are available in the certain suite. Um, the ones that are six, usually on the ninth or tenth floors, usually means that it is a super suite. Looking through all of these rooms, I decided that I did want to live on the tenth floor with my roommate group. Um, as you can see, the gender is D, which means that it's dynamic, so if you're an all-female group or an all-male group, it doesn't really matter. But once you select that room, the super suite is going to change the gender of that room to whatever gender you are. So similar to the hall style, notice that you, s you can see the floor plan. 
um, you can see how the bathroom is arranged and how like the living room is arranged. So, you know, depending on like where you want your room to be and how you want the room roommate dimensions to go um, is very important. So it's very important that you look at the floor plan. Unless you like surprises, then you can just, you know, choose whichever one. So my roommate group decided that we're going to live in suite rooms 1007 and 1010. So I just assigned me and my roommate group different rooms. Um, so basically, whoever wants your roommate will just have the B of your room. And I am finished. So as you can see that since it is a super suite and my roommate group has four people in it, um, basically there is still an empty room because it can fit six people inside a super suite. So maybe another roommate pair would like to join us in the super suite later on. But once again, you get to this end page and you can look at your floor plan, look where you're situated. Um, but you can't really um, change anything until the room swap period begins to make sure everyone has easy access to a room and everyone has a chance to get a room. And next, we're going to look at how to choose a room apartment style. Okay, so we're at the last part of the room selection tutorial, and we're looking at apartments now. Um, we decided, I decided that I wanted to live in a Ram Village 5. So, as you can see, the arrangement of these different rooms are different. So, whereas it, instead of saying single, double, and triple, it says one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, and four, st four bedroom style rooms. So... Basically, it'll tell you how many beds are available in that apartment. So looking at Ram Village 515, apartment 515. So once again, similar to the hall and suite style selection, we are looking at a floor plan, you know, seeing where the kitchen, where the living room, where the rooms are oriented. And the same D gender is going to come into play here with the dynamic gender. Um, and you can see on the key at the bottom, it says depends on first assigned. So this is where our kind of choosing versus A, B, C, or D becomes relevant because they're actual letter corresponding to the rooms. And because a lot of the rooms are single occupancy, it does actually matter. So, you know, if you want to have the room right beside the bathroom or whatnot. So, you know, it depends on what you choose. So similar to the hall style and suite style end pages for the room selection, you can see that there's a floor plan listed, who's occupying it, and like if there's any empty spaces, there's not because this is like a four bedroom styled apartment, um, where located, the room type, all that information. And like hall and suite style rooms, you're not going to be able to change it until the room swap period opens up. So... Now looking at roommate groups, so this is my roommate group. Um, you can remove people from groups, add people to groups, which, you know, depending on room availability, if you decide that it's easier to get it with two people, you can do, um, or if you want to like stick with a certain group of people, this is like where you would go. So roommate groups make it really easy for you to get housing with your friends, with your buddies, whether it be hall, suite, or apartment style. So this is basically the end of part two of the tutorial. Hope you guys liked it. Um, if you have any questions, contact UNC Housing. But other than that, thanks for watching.